captured the gun that killed my boy three months ago. So you're asking me, do I regret going into Cambodia? No, I don't. You know what? I wish I'd gone in sooner. And harder. Got it. It was, it was, it was horrifying. It was horrifying. And he was so confident. <laughs> no one else. You see, I was the only one that Mao would trust personally, man to man. When David tried to lay a finger on him, Nixon, Nixon made mincemeat out of him. What revolution, David? You just let Richard Nixon claim the country was in a state of revolution? With, with protesters bombing and assaulting police officers? It's not how I remember it. What I remember is people protesting peacefully and legitimately against the Vietnam War. That's what I remember. Music off, please. By the end, oh. wiretapping students and breaking into journalists' homes was beginning to, to sound like a rational response. Well, I'm sorry you feel this way, but I simply cannot share your view. About what, exactly? About any of it, Frank. I, I, I thought today was a huge improvement. Are you nuts? Let me tell you how bad things were today. After the taking finished, I overheard two members of the crew say they never voted for him when they had the chance. But if he ran for office again today, he'd get their support. You're making him look presidential, for Christ's sake. And forget about the trivia, David. Who cares whether Nixon took the White House bed to Europe when he traveled? I do. Well, it's irrelevant. It's just a sort of banal anecdote that would distract the talks. A what? Why didn't anyone stop me? They should have physically stopped me. No. It's a Friday night. You probably got somebody there whom you're uh, entertaining. No. Well, then what are you doing? A handsome young fellow. An eligible young bachelor. Alone. It should be explosive. What phone call? Phone call to my hotel room. Well, do you feel you ever obstructed justice or part of a conspiracy to cover up or obstruct justice? No. And I'm interested that you use the term obstruction of justice. Now, you perhaps have not read the statute with regard to the obstruction of justice. As it happens, I have. Oh, you have, you say? Well, then, uh, you'll know. It doesn't just require an act. It requires a specific corrupt motive. And in this case, <laughs> I didn't have a corrupt motive. What I was doing was in the interest of political containment. Well, be that as it may, the direct consequences of your actions would have been that two of the convicted burglars would have escaped criminal prosecution. Now, how can that not be a cover-up or obstruction of justice? Well, I think the record shows, Mr. Frost, that far from obstructing justice, I was actively facilitating it. When Pat Gray of the FBI telephoned me, this was July 6th, I said, Pat, you go right ahead with your investigation. That's hardly what you call obstructing justice. Well, that may be, but for two weeks prior to July 6th, we now know that you were desperately trying to contain or oh, block the investigation. Oh, no, 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 obstruction of justice is obstruction of justice, whether it's for a minute or five minutes. And it's no defense to say that your plan failed. I mean, if I tried to rob a bank and failed, that's no defense. I still tried to rob the bank. Will you just wait one minute there, Mr. Frost? There is no evidence of any kind. Well, the reason there is no evidence is because 18 and a half minutes of the conversation with Bob Haldeman from this June period have mysteriously been erased. That was an unfortunate oversight. And Bob Haldeman is a rigorous and a conscientious note-taker. His notes are there for all to see. Well, we found something rather better than his notes. A conversation with Charles Colson, which I don't think has ever been published. Okay, here we go. It hasn't been published, is it? No, but one of my researchers found it in Washington. Where it's available to anyone? Who consults the records. Oh. Well, I just wondered, you know, if we'd seen it. Creating the most. 